Doctor Who is a hugely popular and influential show, capturing the hearts and minds of multiple generations around the world. Despite its success on TV and in both book and audio formats, Doctor Who has never been able to succeed in the lucrative world of video games. But why is this? By the end of the 90s, Doctor Who had had a fair few stabs at breaking into the gaming industry. From text adventures to first person shooters, there was a lot of ground covered, but there was a shocking lack of quality in almost every single release. However, would the show's revival in 2005 serve as the spark necessary to reinvigorate Doctor Who's gaming attempts? Alongside the airing of The Christmas Invasion, the BBC released an interactive episode called Attack of the Grask. It was one of those gimmicky things the BBC tried out as they pushed for more people to use the red button service. It's a fully live action adventure filmed by a proper crew, but its interactive nature has led fans to debate whether it counts as a TV episode or not. It's quite cool honestly, it's a lot like Dragon's Lair and Space Ace with how you influence the events on screen. The interactive episode was put onto the Doctor Who website in January 2006, along with the Series 2 box set later that year. I'd definitely recommend checking it out, if only because of how strange it is to experience. The first proper official Doctor Who game of the revived era of the show was Doctor Who Top Trumps for the PlayStation 2 and Nintendo DS. I don't have a whole lot to say about this game, it's just Top Trumps. There's nothing to it, it's just a video game version of the Doctor Who Top Trumps set. I'm actually surprised this game exists. How did they get away with it? Who would possibly want to pay full price for this when you can just buy the physical cards for like 5 quid? Look, I've even got them here. It's just a pointless game, there's no depth. The only good thing is the unique art style which is clearly inspired by the Dreamland and Infinite Quest animations. I can't believe this was the only proper Doctor Who game in the whole of the 2000s. It's embarrassing. Even though Doctor Who Top Trumps was the only game to come out on traditional platforms in the 2000s, there were still other forms of Doctor Who games. During the Russell T Davies era of the show, there was a metric f ton of official Doctor Who Flash games. Flash games? I've heard of those. I think my granddad used to play them when he was a kid. All joking aside, Flash games were absolutely huge during the 2000s. Thanks to Web 2.0 and the improvement of web browsers, Flash games became immensely popular thanks to websites like Newgrounds and Miniclip. I have fond memories of Miniclip. I used to come home from primary school and play Miniclip games on the family computer. I would pour hours and hours into them. Flash games were cheap and easy to produce on a corporate scale leading companies such as LEGO to immediately dive into the market and create their own official ones hosted on their websites. The BBC, not wanting to miss out, also jumped into the fray, with a huge range of Doctor Who Flash games. These Flash games were almost always loosely based on episodes, and during Series 2 they would be released alongside the episodes they were about. It's a pretty cool idea and it definitely kept me coming back each week to see the new games. There are too many games to go through in depth, so I'll just talk about some of my favourites. I was never really big into the puzzle games, so I was always drawn to the more exciting, action based games such as The Last Dalek. This game was great, you get to control the last surviving Dalek from the Series 1 episode and rampage through Van Staten's complex, massacring anyone and anything in your way. Imagine how cool that would be for a kid. As far as Flash games go, it's pretty solid and it still holds up quite well. One of the most impressive and in-depth games was Cyber Assault based on the Series 2 two-parter Rise of the Cybermen and Age of Steel. The game picks up where Age of Steel left off, with you taking control of the Preachers as they try to liberate the world from the Cybermen. The game's a lot like a simplified version of Risk. You have a number of units in each zone and you move them around, taking new territories and trying to defeat the enemy to capture their zones. However, it doesn't stop there. 
When you successfully invade a territory with a Cyberman factory, you have to manually infiltrate it in a top-down section and destroy the patrolling Cybermen and the Cybus transmitter. It's a bit like the original Metal Gear game. This could have easily been its own Flash game, honestly, but it's great that they added it in because it gives some nice variety. Another game I loved to play growing up was Daleks vs Cybermen. I'm noticing a theme here. The game was based around the Series 2 finale, Doomsday. You control a squad of Cybermen as you try to defeat the Daleks to win the Battle of Canary Wharf. It's a great little top-down, real-time strategy game, even if I did suck at it as a kid. It was just so cool to control the Cybermen trying to fight the Daleks. As a kid watching the Series 2 finale, I always wanted to see more of the battle, so this game was perfect for me. There were only a couple of Flash games released after the Davies era. Almost none of these were based on specific episodes, which is a shame after the creativity of the Flash games that released alongside Series 2. That being said, in 2015 the BBC released Doctor Who Game Maker, a Flash game where you can make your own rudimentary Flash games with the tools they give you. It's nowhere near as in-depth as something like Mario Maker, but for a free little game I can imagine some kids got a lot of mileage out of it. I feel like these later games just lacked the charm of the Flash games during the Davies era, but that could just be nostalgia getting in the way. Unfortunately, almost none of the Flash games are available anymore, they've all been taken offline. You can still access some of them through the Wayback Machine, but to play them you need to use Internet Explorer. Much like everyone's favourite Google Chrome downloader, Flash games were definitely a product of their time which is why the BBC stopped bothering at the turn of the decade. But there is still one last browser game to talk about. Have you ever looked at Doctor Who and thought, hmm, cool, but what if it was an MMORPG? No? Well, you're a rational human being. For some crazy reason, in 2012 the BBC commissioned the browser-based MMORPG game Worlds in Time. This was a game where everyone was online in the same virtual world, much like Club Penguin or Toontown, but with a far smaller budget and less charm. The fact you've probably never heard of this game is telling, because it was a huge flop and shut down just two years later. The idea of a Doctor Who MMORPG, whilst unusual, is a noble concept. It could have worked if it had been done right, like Star Wars The Old Republic, but it was not done right. The game didn't seem to know who its audience was. It tried going with a very kid-friendly art style that made it seem like it was for kids under 10. The game was sparsely populated and riddled with microtransactions, so it's really not surprised that it never went anywhere. Flash games are one thing, but Doctor Who jumped ship to the next big moneymaker, mobile games. You know, those games you download on your phone, play for a week and then forget about. Wait, you do have a phone, don't you? Do you guys not have phones? Yeah, you guys all have phones. Phone. Right? Let's take a quick whirlwind tour of what Doctor Who mobile games have to offer. I can't show you my own footage because they almost all got taken offline. Man, I love digital-only products. The first mobile Doctor Who game was called Mazes of Time, released in December 2010. It was an impressive hit when it launched because it had been barely advertised. The game is pretty simple. You control the Doctor and Amy and have to solve puzzles. Much like a Lego game, you can switch between the two characters to solve specific puzzles, but these puzzles can get really boring and repetitive. The graphics are pretty average, it kinda looks like a Nintendo DS game. The story is fairly fleshed out and the game received two extra level packs, The Christmas Trap and Angels in the Shadows. For a mobile game in 2010, this isn't too shabby but it's far from perfect, and I wouldn't rush out to track down a playable version anytime soon. The next game to come out on mobile was Doctor Who Say What You See. This game is a straightforward puzzle game. You see a visual clue based on a Doctor Who episode and type in the answer, receiving a short fact file about the episode as a reward. There's nothing else to it. It's one of those games that was made with a small budget and quick turnover in mind. It's pretty pointless, honestly. Did you really think we'd be able to talk about mobile games without running into a Candy Crush clone? There have been not one, but two Match 3 Doctor Who games. 
The first was Doctor Who Legacy, released in 2013. This was followed by Doctor Who Infinity in 2018. Both of these are exactly what they say on the tin. You just have to match three of a certain colour or object. That's it. I never really got into the whole match three thing, but I've heard these games are good for what they are. I do have to admit that the developers really went above and beyond by giving them a lot of support and giving them storylines, rather than just shitting out a match 3 because hey, Candy Crush is huge. Hell, Infinity even has full voice acting from Michelle Gomez and Katie Manning. You've got to respect that for a random match 3 mobile game. Doc 2 would have two more appearances on mobile phones, but these weren't full on games. They were just licensed pinball machines in the Pinball Arcade emulator. The first to be released was a 2016 adaptation of the 1992 pinball machine Time Streams, shortly followed by an original table called Master of Time. I don't know what to say about these, I mean, they're just pinball tables, you can't exactly tell much of a story. I'm not a deaf, dumb and blind kid, I sure don't play a mean pinball, so I can't really appreciate the specific rule sets in these Doctor Who tables. Doctor Who had a really weird flash game presence. There were an astonishing amount, but they're definitely a mixed bunch. But the strong ones shine, and it's a shame they've almost all been taken offline, although flash games in general haven't been a thing for a very long time now. Even still, I'd much rather play Slovene Surfer than Doctor Who Top Trumps, and that game sucks. The mobile games are mainly just forgettable, there's nothing really must-see about them. They're not really all that special. But enough about boring flash games and mobile games, where's the real stuff? Give me the real stuff, the proper games. Where are the adventure games? Well, you can look forward to that next time, because that's a lot of ground to cover and I need time to edit these videos. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on the Doctor Who games that really tried to break through the ceiling. And I'll see you next time.